I'd like to welcome you to the Oklahoma meeting, Oklahoma County meeting of the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association. We have a joint meeting tonight. We have some very special guests in the house, and uh, Don Spencer will be introducing those in a little bit. But let's stand right now for, pre for prayer and then the pledge. Lord, we're come before you. We're thankful that we're able to come before your presence. We're thankful for your blessings in our life. We thank you, Lord, that we have a heritage here in America, that we have liberty and freedoms that's not experienced in other countries around the world. We thank you, Lord, again for our founding fathers, for the wisdom that they had in, in establishing the Constitution to spell out what our rights and liberties are. We pray, Lord, that we'll be good stewards of that liberty, that we'll pass on to the next generation more freedom, more liberty, founded in you, for the generations to come. Bless now our meeting tonight. In Christ whom I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you. may be seated. If you're watching online, we want to welcome you online. Uh, hit the like button, the share button. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we will not be taking any questions online tonight. So if you have questions, they're going to get answered later on. But at this time, we'd like to introduce to you the president of the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association, Mr. Don Spencer. Yeah. How's your liberty tonight? kind of hoping there was a pulse out there somewhere and you brought it in with you. Uh, maybe you haven't noticed, but uh, it does, you don't have to watch the news very long to realize that Second Amendment does actually need to count for something in this country. Uh, you watch over it, and I'll make it very clear. I support Israel. Amen. Our board of directors supports Israel. And uh, what's so important about this is that I support Israel, but also we have to learn from the mistakes that they have made also. And you wonder, well, what mistakes have they made? Well, quite simply, a lot of people don't realize it, that Israel's gun laws were actually more restrictive than New York. Who knew that? Who here knew that? Oh, well, so, well, see, and that's why you come here, so you can learn some stuff, so there you go. But anyway, I even was informed and educated that even a retired law enforcement officer in the country of Israel is required to give up their firearm upon retirement. So how long does it take for you to figure out that when you're attacked by things flying in on prop-driven, whatever you want to call those things, and people landing in groups of 20 and going and stopping and killing people and the atrocities are, are just, just can't be described of what's going on. That let this be a reminder that we cannot let that happen here in this country, either through legislation, laws, ty a tyrannical government for any reason, for any purpose at all. It cannot happen. The irony is, the few people that have survived that were in their homes of these attacks are the ones that illegally had guns and used them. What does that tell you? So we cannot let this country, this state, our own backyard go soft on such a, a detrimental situation that has taken place because folks, evil watches evil and will recreate the same thing right here. And if you don't think so, we have legislators who have been down at the southern border and will tell you horrible stuff that makes Hitler look tame. It's that bad what they're doing to children and, and uh, people across uh, coming across that border. Not to mention that, well, I hate to even say the word president, that uh, is just allowing this to come in. And this is why it's so important that our private property rights must be able that we can protect them, which includes our guns. So this is why tonight we're making a big effort to make sure we recognize, because I actually get tired of people saying, oh, all those politicians are alike. And I'm here to tell you, no, they're not, because we've got some good ones, and they're in this room tonight, and we're going to let you know we're going to recognize them. So I think that's 
so we're going to recognize him. But first, I want to recognize some people. People think that uh, Don Spencer just runs this show by himself, and that's not, that's not true at all. I have to have help. And so I want to recognize, Pastor Vineyard, where are you at, sir? Where did you go? Uh, what, you can't be sitting in the back. Pastor Tom Vineyard is the chairman of the board of the board of directors for OK2A. Yes, sir, just go ahead and come on up here. Uh, the vice chair is Dan Fisher, who you guys know is a member of the Black Robe Regiment. He is in Indiana tonight and uh, wanted to be here, but he had a previous engagement. Obviously, he had to be at also, James Miller, who is a, a board member, who also is out of the country at the moment doing, he's got a brain this big, and he does stuff, and he's taking care of it. Uh, also, tonight we have Kevin Calvi, right there. So Kevin, stand up. Former state representative. If, you, if you've ever heard of the stand your ground law, it's because Kevin Calvi put it, got it put into Oklahoma state law. That's the gentleman right there that did it. For See, that's funny. He thought I was still bragging on him. He's also the, he's also the attorney that uh, defended our constitutional uh, carry in 2019 successfully in the state Supreme Court of Oklahoma. Rex Duncan, I don't know where you're hiding at. Where'd you go, Rex? Come on, Rex, I know you're in here somewhere. Where you at? Oh, there he is, Rex Duncan. That's also a board member back there, former representative. Rex is so old, he's so, he's so old that the governor at the time vetoed open carry, his open carry bill. So he's been around doing this for a while. We absolutely appreciate Rex and his support uh, and working with OK2A. Now at this time, and I hope, uh, hope we're somewhat ready, I want my coordinators, if you're a coordinator or, or assistant coordinator, I want you to come up here towards the front. I want people to see who you are. Come, come right on up here. And no, we're not putting targets on you. We already got those. <laughs> but I, guys, I want you guys to see, like I said, I get too much credit. This is what makes OK2A work, is all these faces right here. And I was going to go through and have everyone uh, sound off, but I forgot to ask for the wireless mic, and so I may have hampered that just a bit. So, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who came the farthest. It was Tahlequah, wasn't that who came the farthest? But uh, that was you, Tom, right? Really? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But anyway, West folks. Monroe. I'm sorry? West Monroe, Louisiana. West Monroe. Oh. <laughs> well, he, he drove in from Louisiana to be here tonight, uh, right here. So, I mean, yeah. Well, like I, said, I get way too much credit. This is what takes place. This is the pulse of OK2A. It's these guys and gals making sure, and you'll notice we, there is one of each. There's, there's not a third option there. So guys and gals for OK2A. You gotta be a male or a female to be a, co a coordinator for Oklahoma Second Amendment Association. So this is what gets it done. And the, I appreciate them so much because we've expanded what has taken place. And Wayne Hill, where are you at? Wayne Hill, stand up. Stand up, Wayne Hill. And right next to Wayne Hill is Terry Thompson. These are the two that absolutely help keep this, this group running because there's no way I could keep up with what they have to keep up with. And Wayne Hill is also the vice chair of the GOP for the state of Oklahoma, and it's so good to be working with him on that. Yeah, Terry, Terry Thompson down there. Now, Terry, now what is it you're going to try to tell me? And Wayne is the guy who recruited me just about exactly four years ago in a hot sandwich shop in Stillwater. Changed my life, folks. Give me a mission in my old age. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a mission, old age gets pretty damn boring. <laughs> <laughs> there. What? Well said. Here, here. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you coordinators very much. I appreciate you going to turn back to the center. Now, there's someone here I want to just embarrass for the fun of it. Doug and Lynn Dye, where are you at? Where are you at? Come on, where are you at? Where are they at? They're, they're there. Stand up for a second. Stand up for a second. Folks, some people know how to celebrate, celebrate their 43rd anniversary. And that's what they're here tonight, celebrating their 43rd anniversary. And thank you so 
much. Handheld stuff with all kinds of arguments. Thank you so much. Also, where's Winona at? Winona's back there at the back table. She has helped keep track of numerous things that we've had going on. That's right, she swept back there. Winona, thank you so much for your help in that also. Also, U.S. Law Shield is in the house, right back there, folks. And there is a great reason why. Mr. Fincher, Mr. is it fin Fincher? Mr. Fincher, where are you at? Yeah, sir, stand up just for a moment. Stand up just for a moment. Where, where do you go? No? Where, oh, he was here earlier. Oh, there you are. Yeah, stand up just for a moment. This is the reason why you need a U.S. Law Shield. This is the gentleman who is an FFL that the ATF has illegally, tyrannically gone into his home and done all types of things. And I want to thank State Representative J.J. Humphreys, who's working to make sure he gets his rights taken care of that should have never been messed with right there. One of the reasons why you need U.S. Law Shield, and, and we almost laugh at each other every couple of weeks or so, there's someone that sends an, an I need help message, and I ask them, Do you have, who's your attorney? And they, well, I don't have one. I said, well, get ready to stick a big crowbar in your wallet because that's what it's going to take to defend yourself. And, and I hate to be cold with people like that, but if you do not have, if you're involved in a self-defense act, you need to have them right next to your secured weapon <laughs> in your pocket. So anyway, Josh, thank you for being here tonight. What was the one thing I was supposed to make? Oh, yeah, they've got a special going for tonight. If you go back there and talk to them, but like I say, make sure you do that. All right, appreciate it, Josh, very much. Now let's see where we're done. Okay, uh, Michael Morrison, why don't you come on up this way if you would, please. Um, uh, the Americans for, oh, there he is. Americans for uh, Prosperity is a, a group that we have been working with on some multi-issues and OK2A along with many grassroots groups that we're going to have this huge meeting right here in the same building on October the 30th at 6 p.m. bringing 18 grassroots groups together to strengthen our voice inside this state, especially inside the state legislature. Uh, which is very, very important. So I want Michael just to speak for just a moment on, on a, pro a program that he has going that we would like for you to just listen to for just for a moment. Thank you, Mike. Yep, thanks. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to me and having me here tonight. Um, my name is Michael Morrison. I'm with Americans for Prosperity. On October 26th, we have an opportunity for people in northeastern Oklahoma, not specific to Tulsa, but that is where it's being held, um, it's what we call our Grassroots Leadership Academy. Grassroots Leadership Academy helps activists and folks interested in being civically engaged be the most effective that they possibly can be. Lots of times we see folks getting burnt out, spinning their wheels, and, and getting frustrated because they're advocating day and night, but they're not making the change they want to make. Come learn with us. This is a three-night series. It's three consecutive Thursdays in a row, so it's the 26th the 2nd, and then November 9th. And we're gonna teach folks some of those tips and tricks on how to interact with elected officials and legislators. Dinner's provided, again, 100% complimentary. And if you're a coordinator with OK2A, please come see me after this. I'd love to bring this to a town near you. Uh, and if, you're, if you have your own campaign going, this is a great opportunity for you to send some of those activists and learn how to be uh, most effectively involved. Thank you so much for your time. I forgot to do things, so, and, and actually no one reminded me, but here's what we're going to do. You know those tickets that just got passed out to you? Yay. We're going to give something away. Get your ticket out in front. Oh, wait, I need, to, I, need to I need the drawing bucket. We're, who's got the drawing bucket? Oh, sorry, folks. There it is. Don't accuse us. People can accuse me of anything, but being organized is not one of them, okay? I can be accused of anything. Not guilty, that's exactly right, Cheryl. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Look at your, look at your uh, ticket. That is a one ounce silver 45 caliber bullet. That's total real silver. So here we go, ready? It'll kill Dracula. It'll kill Dracula? I wanna see your gun, okay? All right, so I'm, I'm gonna do the drawing. Here. Southeast Oklahoma. Yeah, you guys in Southeast Oklahoma, that'll, that'll kill Bill Bigfoot too. So. All right. So the last three digits, the last three digits are 701. Who's got 701? 
Who? Come get it. Come on. Over here, Tom. Woo! All the way from Tahlequah, our Cherokee County coordinator. There you go. I never win anything. I never win anything. Uh, well, now, now you're somebody. All right. All right, keep looking at your keep looking at your tickets. I've got here. I love this coin. It's got two 45s on it. It's a Second Amendment. And on the back it says, come and take it. Woo! So look at your ticket because I want you to come and take it. Okay? All right. Here we go. I'm sorry. All right. So we're looking at 159. 159. 159. Okay. You, you should be a little more happier than that. One, five, nine. That was that was my plan that you do like the price is right and let's make a deal and stuff. You bet. What's your name? Steve. Steve. Okay, Steve Shy. Okay, Steve just got that. All right, Steve, thank you very much. All right. All right. We put that there. Hopefully I don't kick the bucket before it's over with. All right. All right. Um, oh, thank you. Okay, a couple of them I want to also introduce here real quick. Uh, elected officials I've got in this room, uh, legislators, I'll wait till just a moment, but we have Sheriff Chris West. Sir, where are you at? Come up here for a moment. What are you doing hiding in the back? I just want everyone to see you real quick. Sheriff West has been a, a Second Amendment supporter. Uh, he was easily, quickly stated real fast that my county is a Second Amendment sanctuary. Amen. So I want you guys to, I want to remind this group of that. Thank you so much. He probably flew in on that sheriff's tag. He can probably go pretty fast. Yeah. Is that, is that Angle Burns from the carburetor? Well. Yeah, not quite. Yeah. So anyway, but don't do that in his county. So anyway, Sheriff, thank you so much you for your thank support. You. Thank you. you. Bet. We appreciate you very much. You bet. Okay, State Representative Connolly, where are you at, man? Would you stand up just for a moment? I stated this earlier in our dinner uh, that we had, but Representative Connolly, in, in OK2A, we would love everyone to carry gun bills, but we've got enough people doing it. But what we do have is people that support it and vote for it without hesitating and, and going for like Representative Connolly, I want to thank you so much for your years of support for us, and thank you very much, all right? And the only time I ever got mad at her is when she said she wasn't going to run for representative again. It's about the only time. So, uh, Representative Marilyn Stark, where are you at? Stand up, this is Representative Marilyn Stark. Same thing. She has she has supported all of our Second Amendment legislation and is a right in here with the grassroots on what's going on and concerns. And we appreciate you being a servant for liberty, ma'am. Thank you very much. And I didn't see that. Max Wolfley, did he make it in? I didn't see. Okay. All right. Also, I want to mention real quick, too. Uh, okay, 2A, maybe some of you have noticed we kind of get involved uh, looking at candidates and campaigns and what goes on across the state. And there was a special election last week. Yes. And there was a guy, Mr. Devers, why don't you just come this way? I want people to come up this way. <laughs> Dustin <laughs> Devers. Dusty Devers uh, won the Senate District Special Election. He still has a, a general election in December the 12th. Is that right? And so we, uh, we OK2A, made an endorsement, and it, we, we, we got things done. Of course, we weren't the only ones in this thing, but this was the grassroots folks working. Uh, Mr. Devers, thank you so much for being here tonight, and thank you for uh, sticking there with us, sir. Thank you, John. Very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to give a description of what's going on as I call your name. I'd like you to come up here to the stage. Representative Jim Olson, would you come, come up this way, sir? Yeah, put your coat on. Come on, hey, come on, preacher, get your coat on. <laughs> Representative Olson is a guy, uh, I mean, up here on the stage, that's right. Representative Olson is a guy, um, Mr. Barry, would you come up here just for a second? Galen? Galen Barry, where'd he go? You disappeared? Oh, there he is. Uh, Representative Olson introduced two bills this year, one of them, and I, I, I love both of them, but he was the first one to say, hey, you know what, 
Um, we need to make sure all people that aren't minors are, can constitutionally carry a firearm, which would include 18, 19, and 20 years old. Uh, if you can serve your country, if you can vote for your country, they need to be able to do that. And so the bill was introduced, and uh, we'll, we'll see, but we, we, we moved a bunch of bills out this year. Also, he has the fair carry bill. Anyone been to a state fair, you know you better have a gun. That's not a big secret uh, right there. And this year, especially in Oklahoma County, where you can have a fair, they have metal detectors up, and magically, minors are in there with guns and shooting them. So we need to bring this up to date in the state, and Representative Olson has that bill. If you would hand him his plaque just for one moment. Stay right there with us. Um, also, uh, let's see, Representative Kevin West. Representative Kevin West, Woo! where are you at, sir? <laughs> you would think someone would get tired of getting awards, <laughs> but he doesn't even get tired. This is a guy that presented constitutional carry for over two and a half hours on the floor. Uh, and, and also, this year, he has HJR. 1034, which is a ch constitutional change on the right to keep and bear arms for Oklahoma. So your right shall not be infringed. <laughs> we also passed legislation so the discrimination against people and gun manufacturing and against credit cards, if that can be stopped. And we had some trouble in the Senate, but we're not going to give up on that. Thank you, Representative West. Okay. Hang on right there. Uh, did Rep. St. Stiegel show up? Is he back there yet? There he is. He looks like a working man. This is what I like. Yep. Rep. St. Stiegel, who is uh, the state's powers committee chair, has introduced two, three, four, five, I think it was seven <laughs> bills for OK2A and got all of them out of the House of Representatives that they're all waiting in the Senate to be heard. I can give you the list, but it's, it's wrong. Um, Representative David Harden. Where'd, you, where'd he go? Don't, I hope he's not back there. So get up, yeah, come on up here, sir. Representative Harden is a former constitutional sheriff, and now he's a constitutional representative. You guys, you guys have heard me speak many times of a House bill called 2051, which is the Private Property Protection Act, which expands the castle doctrine from the walls of your home all the way to the edge of your property and includes the protection of your property. And he was the one that passed this and got it out of the House of Representatives, where he is still currently sitting in the Senate. But we want to make sure he is recognized for his efforts. And also, he got a suppressor's bill passed out of the House also. So. <laughs> State Representative Denise Crosswhite Hayter. Come on up here. She introduced and moved legis and introduced legislation uh, so to clarify the fact that a person can leave their gun, not have to have a, 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 a handgun license, and leave their gun while you're par parked on a public school property. She introduced that. We want to thank her for doing that for us this year also. State Senator Jerry Albert. I saw you sneak in back there. So come on. No, don't you wave at me. Come on up here. <laughs> this is not this isn't a waving time. State Senator Albert introduced a bill, Senate Bill 721. This cleans up the fact that those that wish to obtain a handgun license, that it is a handgun license and it's not specifically designated to a pistol, revolver, or semi-automatic. It is a handgun license because currently you have to take specific, it's, it's a, I'm an instructor, it's a mess. He's helped clean that up. We want to thank him for that. State Senator Shane Jett, did he sneak in here yet? No, not yet. 
Okay, I'll, I'll keep going. That'll show him. <laughs> Senator Bergstrom, sir, come right on up here. There we go. <laughs> Senator Bergstrom has been an incredible hawk for private property rights, which includes a bill introduced this year, Senate Bill 197, so game wardens cannot enter your property unless they have a warrant or a probable cause. We also introduced the Private Property Protection Act, uh, also in the Senate. Like I say, this guy's been every year. He's uh, uh, he just gets stuff moving, and in fact, many times on the governor's desk. Also, also Senator Warren Hamilton. You guys may remember. You may remember that. Um, one little bill a few years ago for the nation's first anti-red flag bill. Yeah. This is the same guy right here. Also, he's like me. He's a little bit picky, a little bit picky that um, illegal aliens should not be able to own property in Oklahoma. Yeah. That's all I'm yeah. And I think last but not least, that Senator Michael Weaver, sir, come right on up here. There you go. Senator Weaver. This is how fortunate we are. Senator Bergstrom had introduced the Private Property Protection Act, or I'm sorry, he introduced it, but also he was a House author on Rep. St. Harden's bill. He got busy with some other responsibilities, and Rep. Senator Weaver took the handoff, so he will be prepared to take that Private Property Act bill and, uh, when we start open up in the next session uh, next year to move that bill forward, hopefully get it on the governor's desk and get it signed. And oh, by the way, Governor Stitt said, get it on my desk. So uh, that's, that's what he told me. Now, like I say, folks, we can't do this. When people tell me, like I say, all those politicians are all, they're, they're all worried about themselves. No, you actually have not politicians. These are states men and states women up here. And I am so proud to be able to work with them. And it's because people like you and they hear from you and they hear solid from you makes it easier for them to do their job because some of these, they, they don't think twice about when it comes to defending a constitutional right. So I want to thank you guys very much. We, we may have to all move down. Where, where are we going to try to move to? I'm sorry. Oh, oh thank you. Oh. Cowboy, I about forgot you. How can someone forget you? No, actually, see, that's just that we saved the best for last. It's for good, good recovery, right? Cowboy Stevens, come on up here, sir. Rep. Dave Stevens has carried a bill. Tavoris, you betcha, has carried a bill. So municipal employees will be able to carry while on the job, just like county employees can do now. So he's carried this and pushed this bill. Um, I'm looking, I hope I haven't missed anybody. Is that all my plaques are off the? All but the ones that's on Shane Jett? Jett. Okay. Well, that'll show Shane Jett to show up late, won't it? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, folks, again, uh, we're going to try to figure out a way to do a picture here real quick. Um, how, how can we do this? Let's do this. Everyone step off. They come on down here and we'll do the step. Just come right on down here. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. I'm so glad you could make it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it, just like that. Uh, yeah, let's move them back to the steps. Yeah, we're going to move them right here to the steps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the steps. Over this way.
Look at your tickets. Everyone look at your ticket. We're going to give away some ammo. Ammo right here. You ready? Real quick. 158. 158. 158. Here. Oh, come on. There you go. 150. All right. There we, he's coming down. We'll do one more thing of ammo here. You ready? 692. 692. Come on down here. Look at there. There you go. I got you. See, you, you thought you were just going to leave here empty handed tonight, no, didn't you? Imagine That's you true. left with some bullets and liberty. It's a good combo, right? Okay. And yes, we'll be giving away a pistol here in just a little bit. But first things first, let me make sure I've done all my homework at this time. I do believe so. Okay, folks. The Oh, good. We're doing just right. Okay. I want to uh, recognize the fact that um, OK2A was actually contacted by Jared Yanis because of this bill that he had heard about called the Nation's First Anti-Red Flag Law. Woo. In fact, he was so convinced, he became a member of OK2A. realizing that he was living in the communist country of Massachusetts and is now a refugee, moved to Tennessee where they've got a little breathing room and they just got some constitutional carry, but he was telling me they need to clean that up a bit. But like I say, folks, Jared Yanis is the guy who keeps his eyes and ears on what is going on in the nation's capital and actually puts it into information that even Don Spencer can understand. Because you guys, some of you see these reports, and it'll say, well, that sounds like a good thing. Nope, it's a bad thing. Or that sounds like a bad thing. Nope, this could be the good thing. And he brings it down to layman's terms very quickly, very easily, and has also worked with GOA, which, by the way, um, uh, I, I'm Graham. I'm Graham, where are you at, sir? Say, stand at the back. Come up here at the front for me, please. Uh, GOA Oklahoma uh, representative flew in to be at this meeting tonight. This is the Gun Owners of America's representative, Ian Graham. Hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> I, if, if you talk to him, you'll realize he's not from Guthrie. <laughs> where, where, where's your, where are you need from? Missouri. Missouri? With that accent? Get out of here. <laughs> Okay, well, you're a good salesman. I'll give you that for sure. But anyway, I appreciate you very much for being here tonight. Gun Owners of America made sure uh, that they were here, here tonight. And like I said, I appreciate you very much for making the deal. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I had to make sure I didn't miss that. But this is what is important that, and you'll hear from Jared, that folks, it's us that's going to have to take care of this. You can't depend upon some other big group thousands of miles away. We've got to take care of our own backyard. And that's why it's so important. And we, we've, we've hung out with Jared today. And, uh, folks, he's the Patriots Patriot. And uh, I think you probably already had an idea of that. If, who here actually watches? Uh, Jer look at this. Look at, the arm, look at the arms going up in this place. Yeah. So uh, I appreciate him being here tonight and making an effort to be here. But folks, I want to introduce Jared once you come running up here. Jared Yanis of Guns and Gadgets. <laughs> making it here to Oklahoma, sir. Thank you so much. need to make better decisions in life, trust me. <laughs> I first want to say I've never been in a room with so many legislators and not want them to have me thrown in prison, so thank you all. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, best shirt in the house, thank you for wearing that, my friend. If you all don't know the smoky shirt, check that out. I appreciate you all for coming, really, and for making me feel at home. It's my first time ever in Oklahoma. It was pretty cool. Surreal to go to the bombing site today, but it's even better seeing y'all here today and to see some legislators who are doing work for you. 
I was uh, born and raised where freedom was born and raised, except it doesn't live there anymore. So y'all got some good ones. Stick behind them. They need you. You don't realize how much you help. What we do here is called grassroots motivation, right? The grassroots are a bunch of individual blades of grass. But when you take it as a whole group, it's a lawn. It's a field. It can do a lot of good work together. That's the only way we take this country back, y'all. Trust me. Before I jump into this, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, OK2A. Thank you, Don. Kendall's been like my personal assistant all day. Thank you. Uh, and for all y'all for coming. And uh, most importantly, thank you, God, for allowing us all to be here today. I'm going to say something to you that is a quote that I use. And uh, you're going to hear me say it a few times tonight. But I want you to think of it. And hopefully by the end of this speech, it means a little more to you. When the people lead... The leaders follow. Yeah. That's right, man. Woo! So I'm going to refer to my iPad because I've changed the speech about 17 times in the last 48 hours because things keep happening in this country. And that's been the joy of my channel as I try to keep everybody up to date with what's going on right now. Uh, so it didn't change. I did a speech and I had to keep changing it. So here we go. As many of you just heard, like I'm from Massachusetts. I grew up extremely poor. I grew up in a housing project and I grew up in a very anti-gun family. In Massachusetts, shocker, I know. My grandfather and my uncle would go hunting, but that was it. The girls in the family were not allowed to touch a gun, therefore when they raised children, we weren't allowed to touch guns. And I thought it was weird because I grew up, I grew up in a really bad area. And I saw a lot of things that kids should never see. I've seen people robbed, stabbed, shot. I've seen people murdered. Things you should not see as a, as a child. And I always wondered why my family would tell us that we should not have that tool that our right, the Constitution, says we can have. And it's always stuck with me. But, you know, you're supposed to listen to your family and your, your mom. And supposedly they know what they're talking about. Supposedly. But something happened at an early age that brought me to stand before you all here in Oklahoma. And it's, I started to think for myself. I didn't drink the Kool-Aid. And that's what a lot of the liberal parts of this country do is they, they make people drink the Kool-Aid. They want sheep who follow orders and just do like they're told and don't ask any questions. So as I got older, I started to read things like the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, anything I could get my hand on literature-wise that talked about why those crazy people did what they did in the late 1700s? What drove them to that? What made them feel that they had nothing else to lose and give up their rights, give up their life, give up their fortunes and their family? What would drive people to do that? Then I became a police officer and I got to see firsthand why people needed to defend themselves. And it hit home. Not only did my parents not know what the hell they were talking about, but it wasn't their fault because they didn't know. They were just following what their parents told them. And that's what gets us in the spot we're in right now. Massachusetts wasn't always anti-gun. California wasn't always anti-gun. New York wasn't always anti-gun. The list goes on and on. And there's no such thing, raise your hand if you've heard this, there's no such thing as a blue state. There's only blue cities, y'all. That's right. And if we can get the grassroots motivated, we'll win those states back too. So I started to teach myself, why would somebody want a gun? Why wouldn't someone want a gun? Why wouldn't I, when evil meets me face to face, why wouldn't I want to be my own first responder? Why wouldn't I want that for everybody else? So at an early age in my, my uh, police career, I started to become what I used to call the most constitutional cop to lace them up. And I took it to a different level when I became a supervisor. I would not only teach the new crop coming on about what our jobs were, is to actually defend people's rights, not to write tickets and raise revenue, but I would quiz them on it. As new people would come into the department, I would ask them, I'd point to a certain thing, it would change all the time, it would be, I had the founding documents in my office, I'd point to something on it, say, tell me what that means in your own words, and tell me why you're here. And I know there's a couple 
cops in the, in the uh, audience here, and everybody here is, well, I want to help people. Sorry, I'm, I was a cop for a long time. I swear a little bit, so sorry. Bullshit, that's not why people are there. Tell me why you're really here, and then you can get into the hearts and minds of people. But things I used to do to get myself to where I needed to be before I could start to motivate other people, because I thought it was so important that people know their rules, know their rights, and know why the Second Amendment is so damn important. I needed to, to be able to get my mind right. So because I lived in Massachusetts, I could go to places regularly, like Lexington Battle Green. Anybody know what that is? That's where the shot heard around the world took place, the Lexington Battle Green. It's where the militia stood a line and said, no, no more. And then not too far, a mile down the road, is a place called Concord, Massachusetts, the old North Bridge. And that's where the Redcoats marched across that bridge to go get some cannon and gunpowder and to disarm the colonists. And that's where it kicked off. And I used to go there regularly and, and sit there and, you know, just take it in because it's, it's extremely emotional. But then you look around and you see that nobody else knows what you're doing there. Nobody else knows what the place is. That's because we've let it get that way. Nobody in Massachusetts in that area knows what the Lexington Battle Green is. It's a bunch of three-deckers and some old relic houses from the 1700s that were re rebuilt and people walking by, spitting on the sidewalk, driving by, beeping their horn. Nobody knows what it is. So that's our fault. Everybody here plays a part in that, no matter where we live in the country. But again, I want people to think and understand why we have these rights. Why men and women would give up everything to make sure that you and I have that right right now. So I'd go to these places and think, like, how can I get people to feel what I'm feeling right now to the point where I'm in tears because people died for me on this grass? How can I get other people to feel that way and hopefully motivate them? Well, it worked because during the pistol brace issue, I got a phone call uh, from a friend of mine whose name is Alex Bosco, who invented the pistol brace, SB Tactical. And he said, hey, you're never going to guess who's sitting here watching Guns and Gadgets videos right now at, at the Capitol. So he sent me a picture, and it was then-speaker Kevin McCarthy watching my channel to catch up on things that he should already know. Yes, Kevin. He should already know that stuff, but I now am blessed to say that politicians at all levels watch my channel to learn what they should already know, that we know. That the right to keep and bear arms means something. It's the, right. it's the reason we are a free country. It's a reason America's never been invaded. It's right. a reason why criminals don't come to certain areas in Oklahoma, because they know it's not a soft target. Uh -huh. It's a reason that our children can be young and play free. It's a reason why... Nobody messes with the U.S. Well, we've kind of gotten a little crazy under the last few years with this clown in office, but we can fix that. Yeah, we have to yep. fix it. Absolutely, we have to fix it. But I want to talk to you today what I mentioned in the beginning, and that's grassroots and why it's so important. And it's what OK2A is really, really doing well. You guys, when I was in Massachusetts, I'd go to our state groups meeting and we couldn't get this many people to come to a meeting. We couldn't get that many people that stood in front of the stage and said they were coordinators to help out. We couldn't get that. So y'all are so far ahead of the game. Keep doing what you're doing because OK2A is kicking ass and taking names. We're in the biggest grassroots movement you've ever seen in your lives and many of you don't even realize it. It's called the freedom movement, individual liberty, and we're fighting for it again in this country. Grassroot, grassroots movements are like tiny seeds that grow into mighty trees. They start off small, often with just a few individuals who share common visions for a better world. But it's these humble beginnings that revolutions are born from. And it's easy to think that one person alone can't make a difference. But history has shown us, time and time again, that it's a collective strength of individuals, united by a common purpose that can actually move mountains. Who would have thought that we would beat the toughest military in the world? 
just with a bunch of farmers taking up arms and defending their own, right? Well, we're there again. In a world filled with complex problems and seemingly insurmountable challenges, grassroots movements remind us that change is possible. The things we hear on CNN when they tell us to be mad at this or that, that's not actually what's going on in America. They prove that we don't have to be in positions of power or wealth to make a difference. All it takes is passion, commitment, and the belief that change is not just a dream, but it's actually a goal within reach. You all here in Oklahoma have had some phenomenal changes in your anti-gun laws yes. with very, very minimal movement in a grand scheme, but it's the grassroots movement that did it. And you all are a big part of it. You know, you got Don up there at the state house squawking. You got everybody here at the, the, the county level making sure you guys squawk on the phones so that the people you've elected to represent you can go in in their chambers and squawk and get the stuff done. It's a team. There are links in the chain. And we, we need all of you. It just takes passion and commitment, guys. That's all it takes. I'd rather have 500 people filled with passion and commitment than one person who's well known or has fame and fortune. Yes. It's huge when it comes down to what we do. There are so many people that say, Jared, what can I do? You know, I work nine to five. I can't feed my kids. I struggle. I can't afford to join a GOA or an OK2A. What can I do? Well, do you have a phone? Because you're making phone calls, it goes a long way. Do you have social media? Because spreading things that OK2A is doing goes a long way. Do you have family? Do you have a mouth? Can you talk? Spreading the word goes a long way. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have the ability to fly. You don't have to have the ability to be somebody who people think is important. Grassroots gets it done. Grassroots movements are the catalyst for progress. They inspire others to join the cause. When our founding fathers were getting drunk at the taverns saying, we're gonna, we're gonna fight England, people thought they were nuts, right? But the more they started to say why we should do it, they're trampling on our rights. We need to stop it. This isn't what we were living like over in England. It's worse here. People started to grow the cause. And that's what we have to do now to bring this country back. Grassroots movements also challenge the status quo. They demand that we question, learn, and grow, and they hold a mirror to society. It reflects on a collective strengths and weaknesses, forcing us to confront uncomfortable truths. There's been many times I've gone up in front of politicians and said things I wish I didn't. It was a chance for me to hold a mirror to myself and grow. A lot of times when I first started this, you know, 24 years as a cop, my language has evolved a long way. It was, you're going to do this MF and bill, and you're going to stop this because, and shall not be infringed, and that doesn't get stuff done. It doesn't get stuff done. You all have many legislators here that all say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it doesn't work. You can't be that person and expect good things to come out of that conversation. But as we gather here today, let us all remember the incredible stories that brought about change by grass movements, like OK2A. You've heard these, but they're so good, I'm going to say them again. Lately, y'all have had open carry, permitless carry, the first state to pass an anti-red flag law. You protected religious institutions from being declared non-essential, and the list goes on and on. None of that is in Massachusetts. None of that is in Hawaii or New York. You, can, you guys are ahead of the game, but you have to keep pushing. I still remember calling Don, did you really just pass a non-red flag law? Really? Like, you can't do that. We, the citizens, want to take our country back, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. We just can't do it with the people in the auditorium. We need you to spread the word, and that's what grassroots is, guys. The power of the grassroots movement not—it doesn't just lie with our ability to spark change, but in the ability to transform individuals. You have to change hearts and minds. It's just that easy. When you join a grassroots movement like this one, 
You become part of something bigger than yourself, and in the process, you discover your own potential for leadership, advocacy, and compassion. I never had any compassion. I'm still working on that. But you grow a little bit when you're trying to work with people because they're going to look to you. You know what you're talking about. So you can actually help people get to where you are. It's just like training your own replacement in law enforcement. We're in a period right now where our country and the world has become, un become unstable. Violence is on the rise in places you would least expect it. People are being slaughtered in their homes in areas where government decided people should not have guns because government decided they could keep people safe. <coughs> government has never kept anyone safe throughout the history of this globe. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Violent criminals are attacking people. Go ahead. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Even Ronnie Reagan said it. Some of the worst words you'll ever hear is, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Uh -huh. yep. Violent criminals are attacking people in stores, in their cars, at church, everywhere. Nowhere are you safe. So nowhere should you be left defenseless. And our government is trying to disarm us at every single turn. When we're seeing overseas two countries at war, Ukraine and Israel, where their governments disarm them. How'd that work out? They couldn't give out machine guns fast enough, but it was too little too late in some spots. Look at what happened in areas like that, where governments disarm the people, and when evil arrived, and it always does, people were left begging for mercy, unable to defend themselves, kidnapped, raped, and slaughtered. Not here. Not on my watch. Not on our watch. This is the United States of America. No more will we let governments tell us how we should live our lives and how we should keep our kids safe. We should never let governments tell us what, our, what chemicals need to be in our kids so they can go to school. We should never have a government tell our kids that they're actually something else so that they can feel safe or feel warm and loved. I hope you feel the same way I do, but as long as there is long, there's air in my lungs, guys and gals, it's not happening. My job is to build the grassroots about the Second Amendment. I hope you'll join me, but that's what my job is now. If I knew when I started this that I would work 150 hours a week and do 700 videos a week and never have to be able to look away from my phone and never go on vacation without worrying what's going on in the Supreme Court, I, would, I wouldn't have done it, man, believe me. <laughs> but it's a calling, and I'm honored to do it. In the grand tapestry of human history, it's often the stories of everyday individuals who dared to dream, who dared to rise, that leave that indelible mark. The most profound changes, often being just a single step, a single voice, or a single act of courage. And you all have it in you. We too can be the architects of transformation, the creators of a brighter tomorrow, and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. There will be bumps in the road. But it's in the face of adversity where our strengths truly shine. I'll say it again. When the people lead, the leaders follow. So I challenge you to be a spark that lights the fire of change. Let your passion burn brightly and let the actions inspire those around you. Be that, that, that beacon that people say, hey, if he can do that, if she can do that, why can't I? And why aren't I? When you feel doubt, and you will, remember the countless unsung heroes who chose dedication and how they carved the path towards progress. Believe in yourselves. Believe in the power of the grassroots movement. And believe in the unstoppable force of change. Because when the people lead, the leaders follow. I urge you that wherever you live within this state, or for whoever is watching online, wherever you live in this great land, be a part of this, grass, grassroot, this great grassroots movement to keep and maintain our unalienable right to keep and bear arms, because it is unalienable. We do not get our rights from government, period. So as the saying goes, when the people lead, leaders will follow. Believe in the power of community. Believe in the power of your voice. 
and believe in the power of change. Together, we can and will make America a better place. Our Second Amendment grassroots movement will save the future of this country for our children. That's what it's all about. I mean, I'm 48. I feel like I'm 152, but I've had a good life thus far. It's all about our kids, guys, gals. That's all it's about. We can't give them a country that was as free as when we were young. And that's on us. We need to fix that. You all have a phenomenal group fighting for freedom here in Oklahoma. OK2A is super effective. Please, at this moment, give them a round of applause. Now I pose a tough question for everybody, and I want you to take a second to think about this. What have you done to help their grassroots movement? In public speaking, we call this the uncomfortable pause. <laughs> what have you done to help this movement? If the answer is nothing, fear not. Just do something. Fix that. And ask that question of your brethren, your friends, your family, your neighbors. What have you done to have the world's first anti-red flag law passed? What have you done to help with our constitutional carry? What have you done? Because if you don't know what you can do, we're here to help. It's that easy. That's how we build this movement, guys and gals. As effective as they are, Think of how much more effective these groups could be with our help. You've heard today of some legislators who have done the good work to keep you all freer. How much easier would it be for them if another 400 people had their backs? There's 650,000 people in this city alone. How, easy for, how easier would it be for them if 400,000 people had their backs? And those are small changes that we can have a big impact on. We can get people to do that. I ask you again, what have you done? But remember, when the people lead, the leaders follow. There's another saying that I learned from my friend and gun owners of America, Eric Pratt, whose dad started the whole shindig. And he works with legislators on Capitol Hill. And there's a saying that one of the legislators told his dad, Larry Pratt, years and years ago after they got their grassroots movement to go after somebody who made a dumb decision. It's when I feel the heat, I see the light. Stay on them. When your legislators do good, praise them. When they don't, let them know they need to do better. Because a lot of times, legislators will <laughs> have a massive bill and not a long time to read it and they're going to go off of a summary from an aid and the aid might not have what we want as a goal so they might not know. I mean Nancy Pelosi is famous for saying we got to pass it first to know what's inside the bill, right? Yeah. It ha does happen a lot and it shouldn't. More on the federal level but we need to stop it. Remember, when the people lead, the leaders follow. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Um, yep. Folks, if you can't figure out this guy's special, uh, I didn't ask him for permission to, to mention this, but I learned today. This guy's special to come to Oklahoma. He has an autistic child times four. So you know that he understands communication is extremely important and what goes on in public education or education across the board that we got to make sure we continue to make sure that, we, that they, 
we don't just sexually confuse these kids into suicide. That's exactly what we see across this country. And so, I, like I said, I'm proud of you, Jared, man, tough, tough job. Uh, like I said, it's, it's great to, to have him here today. So I'm gonna bring things up again. What do I do with my bucket? I didn't, I didn't kick the bucket yet, so we're still here. All right, so who's, who's ready? We got, we're gonna go with some, we're gonna go with some more ammo, okay? Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The legislators, you have to put this on your ethics report, okay? <laughs> 157. 157, come on, come on, come on. Selling once, twice, no? Did I call that one earlier? Three times. Three times? Okay, here we go, 184, 184. 184. There you go. Come on down there. There you go. All right. Pastor Barry, why don't you help me pass some of these out here? Okay, we're going to go with another silver bullet. A one ounce silver bullet. All right, here we go. 716. 716. 716. Oh, well, there we go. Look at this, Senator Stevens. All right, that may just pay your gas money back for the <laughs> Ammo? Yeah, ammo. Uh, no, hang on here. We're, we're gonna do the Second Amendment coin. Come and take it. Coin. All right. One seventy six. One seventy six. One seventy six. Come on, you're supposed to jump up and cheer. Yeah, there you go. More ammo. More ammo. Don't want to leave without any. Okay. 187. 187. 187. 187. Okay. Okay, this one's going to. Oh, we didn't get 187? 187. Need another one. Uh, 683. 683. 683. There you go, right there. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, this one's going to be a surprise. I'm just going to tell you the number, then you're going to find out what you want. Okay, you ready? 139. 139. 139. Come up here. All right. Oh, this is perfect. You actually win a gun. All right. <laughs> now we're going to let him have some ammo. And you almost won it. You almost won it. You're so close. All right. Okay, we're getting close. All right. This next one is you come up and pick it. Anything laying over here on the floor. We got an okay two-way, some of this stuff. So be listen. We're going to go from here. Just come up and pick what you want there. It is number uh, 163. 163. 163. Come on, get up here. Up here again. That's it. Oh, another you pick it. 171. 171. Come right up there. There you go. That's it. Another 174. 174. One, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shuffling. I am. I really am. 174. Oh, there you go, Dan. Now you're somebody, Dan. Pick something out. Dan probably wants a license plate. Since he was the one that says I did to have them made up. Okay, 137, 137. Come on, there you go. Jump in there. Go over and pick something. Okay, and this one we're going to do a... Everybody needs one of these. Right? Gadsden flag, okay? Gadsden flag. Do that right here. Is number 137. 137. There you go. That's the last Enter. one. That's the last one you just drew. How did I, did I drop it back in the bucket? Yeah. Sorry. 184. 184. There you go. Got your Gaston flag right there. Don't you drop them back in the bucket, brother. Am I? Yeah. Well, let him just pick. Let grab them. You came over here to grab. Grab something you want here. Here you go. All right. 696. You know, there's one thing you don't do is. Get a gun group mad at you. <laughs> Pretty sure. So I'll sit by. This is your first time up here, isn't it? Right. Yes, first time today. Hey, yeah. 
card for me. Yep, thank you, sir. Number 144. Number 144. Oh, come on, jump up. Yeah, there you go. She can pick something right there. All right. Okay, let's get serious about this, right? We have an American made heritage. 22 with also a 22 magnum cylinder extra. Okay? This is going to be the next ticket. Everybody's looking. <laughs> no, it's, it, it looks pretty new. 717. <laughs> something else. Yep. That makes my day right there. Yeah. So on top of everything all else. Yeah. All right. Now, there's something I failed to mention earlier, and I feel about this tall because I listed our board of directors and I failed to mention one person on it. The most important one. And I'm going to go ahead and embarrass her. Denise Hartley, where are you at? Denise, where'd you go? There, where's she at? Denise, come now. Come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. I can't come up. All right. Denise is our secretary treasurer, and uh, if there's anyone that keeps me on a straight and narrow, uh, it's it's her. And she also, I think she graduated with a sarcasm degree. <laughs> so we, we uh, but thank you, Denise, for your help, folks. She does so much behind the scenes. Of the right. And no, I can't imagine how I forgot that, but I, I did, Denise. Forgive me on that. Okay, we are getting ready to wrap this up. Oh, we'll do some more stuff here in just a minute. Uh, no, not one minute, but 15 seconds. 15 seconds, because I know that might transfer to one minute. All right. I'm going to read everyone's mind. Terry Thompson, does this guy ever shut up? Um, I'm going to make an appeal. We need coordinators. We need coordinators in the counties where we have chapters to help out our existing coordinators, but most especially, we need coordinators in the counties where we do not have a chapter. My name is Terry Thompson. You can get me on Facebook, 580-670-0357. 580-670-0357. Call me. I won't try and sell you on the job, but I can answer all your questions. We would need, I want to get all 77 counties covered by Christmas of next year, and I need your help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I need to get an but we'll, we'll do it in just a minute. I can just come up here close anyway. Okay, um, folks, you brought this one, right? Okay. Let's just, who, who came the farthest? Let's just decide this right now. Who came the farthest trip? Let's, Tahlequah, who else? Jim Olson came from... Sequoia County? Any, anyone southeast Oklahoma? Where? Warren Hamilton. Warren Hamilton? Warren Hamilton? Well, Missouri. Hey, hold on, hold on. Senator Hamilton came from heaven. <laughs> so, he probably did make the, the longest trip up here. So let's do this. Senator Hamilton, I want you to come up here because there's anyone that needs a Let's Go Brandon hat. Uh, I'm sure it's you. <laughs> There you go. Let's go. There you go. Like that. And he's going to get a, I don't know if you've got one of those or not. No, but I do now. But he does now. <laughs> Senator Hamilton. Absolutely. All right, you bet. So, uh, but folks, uh, again, this is how we get things done is by recognizing <laughs> legislators. <laughs> that <take> one <laughs> Good one of them. Uh, do the right thing. We keep doing the right thing. Legislators, thank you so much. Uh, Sheriff West, you still back there, sir? Thank you so much for your service uh, go, going across the state. And I'm going to ask uh, Senator Hamilton to close us in prayer at this time. But I tell you what, folks, again, I cannot thank you enough. Jared, dude, you rock. Yeah. Thank you. Father, when we 
come to you in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. We thank you for the gift of American citizenship. That we live in a country where we not only have the privilege of influencing our government, but it's also a sacred obligation. Father, we ask that you remind us on a daily basis on the significance of that obligation. We thank you for the word that was given to us tonight. We thank you for OK2A and for all the patriots that are involved with OK2A. Father, we thank you for every single one who gave of their time, their treasure, and their talent to be here tonight. We thank you that they cared enough to participate in the maintenance of this union and to influence their government. Father, we thank you again for America. We thank you. We ask you for all, everybody that came here tonight to have safe travels on the way home. And Father, we thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, without whom we wouldn't even have this country. And Father, without whom we wouldn't have eternal life. And we love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, okay, I, you had, I, I didn't want to say something.